Hi everyone, welcome to the video on porting a RISC V SOC on FPGA board. On the same FPGA board, last time we had done a counter design. Now we'll be porting a RISC V SOC on this FPGA board. The, the RISC V SOC which we are using is an open source SOC. It's based upon what is known as VEX RISC V. It's FPGA friendly. And this is the SOC we are going to put on FPGA board. And you will see how easy it is to put an open source risk 5 SOC on an FPGA board. So without doing, without taking much time, let me just open the project I have created for this. I'm using the same software I had used last time. So let me open. So this is the project which I'm using. I'm just opening the project. It has risk 5 SOC. It has a risk five core and let's get started on that. Okay, so I have opened the project. This is the top Sapphire file, which instantiates the Sapphire core risk five SOC, which is based upon uh, the FPGA friendly risk five core, which is talked about. There is a constraint file I have created. I have defined clock periods for the system clock, for the JTAG clock. I've defined these to be exclusive. And you can actually run through the whole flow really quickly through this. So let me first run synthesis. So what it will do is it will do a synthesis based upon the constraint file and based upon the RTL which exists. And the advantage with using this software is that it can run through all the flow in a single step without you needing to run each step separately. Of course, you can run each step separately as well, but if there are no errors, it just goes through the next step uh, automatically and completes the flow. So right now I'm running synthesis, then I will run basically, if there are placement, it will run placement. Right now it is doing LUT mapping, which is done in synthesis. Then it will do placement, then routing, and then it will create a bit stream, which I can then put on the FPGA board. The FPGA board I'm using is this one, the Sapphire FPGA board, which we had seen last time as well. Now mapping your RTL design, which is a little bit bigger design, design to the FPGA board, which is in synthesis step. Once during the synthesis step, the RTL is mapped onto LUTs and that mapping is done. And then a post synthesis optimization is also done. Now it is doing what is known as placement. Placement is putting the things where you want to put on the device, which plays as in there, there'll be multiple of LUTs and which place you want to put your logic LUTs, which have created. The placement is in done in such a way so that the timing is met. And then basically uh, whatever needs to connect to IOs is closer to the IOs. Now you can see it has started global placer where basically it will run through multiple iterations, check what is a slack and the goal is to optimize the slack. You can see as in right now the worst slack is this in picosecond. In multiple iteration, it the tool which will find out the right placement for this design and continue to reduce the slack so that you can meet your timing. And you can see, right, you can run through the whole VLSI flow in this starting from RTL design to synthesis, placement, routing, timing analysis, and then putting it on FPGA board. And it's very, very straightforward and easy to run this flow. So it's still going through the placement step and optimizing the placement for you. Now it has started what is the routing step. Routing step means basically connecting the wires and logic in such a way. So there is setup and hold no STA violations are there. So you can see it's identifying the critical path and ma making sure the wire length is lesser on the critical path and your timing is met. Again, you can run each and every step of the VLSA flow in this yourself. You can do it yourself. You can change constraints and modify constraints and see whether the design still meets timing or not. You can do all of this yourself. So now it is doing a final STA. So it has done placement. It has done routing. It is now running a final STA just to make sure the whole chip after placement and routing with all the connectivity done is meeting timing. And that it has done now. Now what it is doing is it is generating a hex programming file, which is also known as a bit programming file. 
which is used to port it on the FPGA. This hex file is actually what is ported on the FPGA. Okay, so it has generated a hex file. The next step for us is basically open the programmer and then port this on the FPGA. So this is, we are using this particular device. We'll choose the bitstream file it has created, this. And we'll choose what is what a kind of port we are going to use to program our FPGA. And then we'll just run. Now, when, when once the, our FPGA is programmed, it will tell you the programming was successful. So it is now writing the data on the flash of the FPGA and programming the LUTs so that this design is done. And you can see here our flash verify, flash verification was successful. Also, SPI active programming is done. That means our FPGA through the SPI port now has been programmed. So you can see, you can run through all the steps in the VLSA flow yourself, not that someone else is running and you are watching the video. You can run the whole step yourself, put a RISC-V core on an FPGA, and now on the top of it, you can program multiple software application and embedded application as well. And it took us less than 10 minutes to do it.